Hello and welcome back. This is chapter 14, Performance Measurement. It also happens to be our last chapter of the course. All right. In this chapter, we have three learning objectives. We are going to look at calculating and interpreting ratios for liquidity, solvency, and profitability. Uh, in this video, we will be looking at the first type, which is liquidity. First though, I have some good news for you. You will receive a list of these ratios, that is a formula sheet uh, for this chapter. Uh, I have included it, uh, oops, not in content admin, this is in content, pardon me, final exam. And this is what's gonna be um, there. So what does this all mean for you? <clears throat> well, you still have to practice. And so uh, why I say practice is because while we're going to be doing a lot of dividing by and maybe some subtraction, uh, it is always best practice to be really familiar in the mechanics. But really, what we're interested in is not necessarily whether you can pick out the right numbers and add or subtract or divide or whatever. Um, we want to know what does this mean? So yes, you calculated something. What does it mean? What does it mean? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it, you know, uh, paired with a couple other ratios from the company, how are they doing um, with the statement of, cash, uh, statement of cash flow? How is this company doing? Are they doing better or worse than last year? Are they doing better or worse than their competitors? And so performance measurement uh, is how we measure the performance of companies. How are they doing? All right. So when looking at our ratio analysis, we have three main types. Liquidity, which says, hey, in the short term, are you going to be able to pay your obligations? Do you have the cash on hand to pay your obligations? In the next chapter, or pardon me, in the next video, we'll be looking at solvency. So over a longer period of time, do you have um, the total enough on hand, um, or pardon me, do you have enough to pay your um, total liabilities? So in the long run, are you solvent? And then, Profitability, cool. You may be liquid, you may be solvent, but are you making money? All right, so in this chapter, we'll be looking at liquidity ratios, specifically the current ratio, receivables turnover, and inventory turnover. And within each of those turnover ratios, we're gonna figure out um, a way to turn this calculation into, well, how many days on average does it take for the company to collect their total amounts of receivables? Um, yeah, so how many days in total does it uh, take for them to collect their total amount of receivables? Similarly, we're gonna say, cool, how many days on average does it take for you to turn over all of your inventory? So if you have, um, uh, if all you do is sell bananas, and it takes you on average 30 days to sell all of your banana inventory. That is, it turns over 12 times a year or 30 days. Um, is that okay? Well, no, a banana likely only lasts like a week or shorter. So if it takes on average 30 days and um, you know that bananas you know, expire after a week, then guess what? That's likely an indication that that company is not doing very well. However, if you have the same numbers, but instead of bananas, it is for diamonds, you sell all of your total diamond inventory within 30 days, oh yeah, you're probably doing pretty good, especially if the industry standard is uh, 60 days or three months or six months. All right, let's do some calculations. Or rather, let's look at some formulas because I have all, all the um, faith in the world that you are able to do divided by. So I won't be necessarily doing divided bys with you. All right, so current ratio. This is uh, can be expressed as either a number or a ratio. And what it takes is your total current assets and divided by your total liabilities. In general, higher is usually better. Um, but within here, there may be elements of current assets that do not represent financial health. So for example, if you have slow moving inventory, 
Um, you know, maybe it's even becoming obsolete. Like you have some really old, um, your computer manufacturer or pardon me, a computer retailer and you have some really old computers. Um, your ratio might look pretty good, but if you really dig into it, you might realize, oh crap, it's because, um, my computer inventory might be slow moving. It might be nearly obsolete. So higher is typically better, but you need to do some more digging. And, um, so typically what we say here is a ratio of one means um, that they are liquid, but two to one is typically what we would like to see. So we have twice as many current assets to the amount of current liabilities. And if it is under one, it means you have more liabilities and assets, and it means you're probably going to be, um, you're, you're not liquid. And you're likely, it indicates great troubles in your ability to repay um, current liabilities with your current assets. So one, definitely over one, um, typically around two to one. Our next, um, our next is our receivables turnover. And so this is where we look at our net credit sales and divide it by our average gross receivables. So what does that mean? Well, if we do not have uh, more information, we take our total accounts uh, for me, we take our total revenues and um, we minus off any cash sales. But if we don't have any more information, we just take our total revenues for the year. And then we take our average AR uh, for the period. So ending last year plus ending this year divided by two. And if we don't have ending from last year, then we just take our current year. In general, we want this to be higher, meaning we want the number on top to be big and the number on the bottom to be smaller. And so uh, receivables turnover to be relatively high because uh, that means you're collecting your total amounts of AR relatively quickly. Um, but it doesn't, all, higher isn't always better because what that could mean is um, you know, maybe you are limiting the amount, <clears throat> for me, limiting the amount of accounts receivable that you are um, extending to potential customers, and maybe you're losing some cu potential customers because they didn't qualify for your accounts receivable, um, and maybe they would have been great customers if you had given them the chance. All right, let's look at an example. So um, we are going to. Um, Following information is available for Farley Corporation, um, and we want to know what the turnover ratio is for 2022. So you give this, pause the video, give this a shot, and we'll see how you've done. All right, so let us calculate this. Um, so our turnover ratio is going to equal our credit sales, and we said, oh, well, they actually told us what the credit sales are, and if they had just said revenues, we would have just used revenues uh, and assumed that that was representative, but perfect, $3 million, actually, I'll just, two, three, two, three, one, two, three, great, I know, I know, pardon me, okay, and then uh, I need average accounts receivables down here. I'm given accounts receivable last year, accounts receivable this year. So we need to find out the average. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, 400, 1, 2, 3, uh, plus 360, 1, 2, 3. Put some brackets around those. Divide by two. If you're like Samantha, we can we can just visualize it. Cool, that's that's cool. You should have visualized it. Um, and then we just math this out, and we get seven point nine times. And YC is the correct one. All right, for fake Harry Potter bonus points, um, what would your days um, average days collection be on this? Well, let us see. Let us take equal 365 uh, divided by 7.9. That means that basically every 46.23 days or every 46 days, uh, they collect uh, their total accounts turnover, or probably a total accounts receivable, uh, which, I mean, if they have invoices at net 30, I mean, it means that, you know, they're 16 days longer on average than their uh, net 30. I'd probably start asking our accounts receivable supervisor if they can get this down um, to really close to uh, 30 days.
because on average, uh, it should be about 30 days um, because that's what your net terms are. You know, some people are going to pay you pretty much right away, especially if you, if you have some discounts. Um, why is this at 46 days? I mean, it's not at 146 days, so it doesn't. it's not bad. It's not alarming. I think it could be better. And then if we kind of received the industry average and we saw some competitors and we saw what their, um, their days were last year, then we can start putting together a total constellation. But this number on its own can give us a little bit of indication uh, as to, you know, good, bad, otherwise. But we can't really start telling um, the whole story without more numbers. All righty. So let us look at inventory turnover. This shows us how quickly can we turn inventory into cash or otherwise known as the liquidity of inventory. So Similar to our accounts receivable turnover, uh, we're going to be looking at one income statement portion and one balance sheet portion. So here, we're going to look at, excuse me, sorry, I had to take a pause there. I'm not exactly sure where I left off. I just didn't want to cough on video if I could help it. All right, so here we are going to start with our income statement item, which is our cost of goods sold, and divided by our average inventory. So last year's inventory balance plus this year's inventory balance divided by two. In general, higher is better because it means that whatever we have on our inventory quote shelves are turning over quicker. However, um, you know, it just might mean uh, higher isn't, is typically better, but not always is typically better. Uh, but one way that it wouldn't be is if, for example, you just never had any inventory on hand and you were missing out on sales um, because you didn't have any inventory. And so my example of this was a few years back, I was ordering, uh, I was in Calgary, I was getting some Vietnamese food um, at a strip mall and I went in, I placed my order. Then I went two stores over to get like a bottle of wine or something or some beer. And I walk in and literally, like, I didn't want all the wine in the world. I didn't want all the beer, but I wanted a little bit of a selection. I went in and I think there was like 12 bottles of hard alcohol, um, three cases of Bud Light and some like random wines. And that was in the entire liquor store. And it, I honestly thought that they were like being robbed or something. And the woman um, at the counter was like, hey, do you want something? And I was like, oh, no. I'm like, okay. She's like, whatever you want. If, we, if you don't see it, we can order it. And all I could think about is like, hey, I don't want to pay, you know, an extra $3 a bottle or an extra, you know, $4 for a six pack. Um, I don't want to pay that and come back in like a week or two. I want to buy, I want to like pay that in order to like, you know, drink with my takeout food. Um, you know, I was happy to just like walk over a couple uh, shops and pay like a higher premium because it was convenient. I was paying for convenience. I wasn't paying uh, to come back in two months. If I wanted to do that, I would just, you know, hop in my car or, you know, walk 15 minutes to go to a superstore liquor store uh, where I'm going to get fabulous, uh, <laughs> you know, fabulous uh, displays uh, and really like cheaper prices you know, because it wasn't convenient anyways. Uh, so higher is typically better, but not always. I'm sure that their store had a very, very high uh, inventory turnover ratio because if you have almost nothing and you sell out of it um, every few days, I mean, like, cool, this is one metric that will look good for you. All right, you give it a shot. Um, pause this video, and when we come back, uh, we will take it up. Talk soon. All right, so let's go here. Uh, we're going to do our... Um, at cost of goods sold. So this is going to be our 1.2 million. And then we're going to divide it by our average inventory, which is going to be, let's see, yeah, let's do this. So that is going to be 320,000 plus our 280,000 divided by two. Oh, what did I do wrong here? Divide it by two. And what did I go wrong? 280, 320, 1.2, divided by, not 0.2, divided by two. All right. And so and then I have an inventory turnover ratio of four. All right. And we can kind of see that average inventory um, is divided into the cost of goods sold. All right, so 
All right, and if you wanna know how many days that is, we take our 365 divided by four, and effectively we are turning over our inventory of Farley, uh, Farley Corporation every 91, every 91 or 92 days. All right, so what does that mean? Is it good, is it bad? I don't know. We don't know what type of inventory they have. We don't know what their inventory turnover was last year. We don't know what the average um, for the industry is, but uh, we do have a starting point. So that is some information. All right, uh, thank you so much for your time and attention. I will see you in the next video where we start looking at solvency ratios.